Real estate is a capital-intensive industry all over the world. Lack of capital for investment poses a huge barrier to entry for many who want to enter the industry. In a country like Nigeria, which in 2021 had the highest number of people living in poverty in the world. I used to live in Yaba at some point. He was my neighbor. He had become a street agent. You know, he was very vibrant and he just wanted business to happen. So he came, showed me the land, and I liked it, but I didn't have money. <laughs> Tolubawa Allah and his business partner, Shupo Jago, delved into real estate business in Lagos, Nigeria, with trust as their capital. And with it, they built a massively successful real estate business, serving various customer bases. In this episode of Seed Diaries, Tolu Bawa Ala shares how they built Blue Line Urban Development and Prindex Properties in the tough Lagos business environment. everyone. Today I have Tolu Bawa'ala with me and he's from Blue Line Urban Projects. Correct. Very excited to have you here today, Tolu. Thank you. Thank you, Omaka. Mm. Pleasure to be here as well. So Tolu, yes. what is Blue Line Urban Projects? What does it do and who does it do it for? Okay, Blue Line Urban Projects is a construction company. What do we do? We build um, projects to the standard, you know, that when people see, they start to wonder, oh, this is really good. Are we building for, or is this, a, is this an international, you know, construction company? No, it's not. It's indigenous, meaning that we'll raise our standards to the level where people start to wonder, oh, this might probably be an international company. Who do we build for? Mostly high net worth individuals, corporate organizations, and then some institutional clients as well. So I can tell you that in the last 15 years of operations, we've done um, buildings starting from residential projects all the way to hostels for, hostels for secondary schools. Uh, we've done a factory before. We've also done the Faculty of Law somewhere in Ajayi Crowda University, I mean, something up to that size. Then in terms of residential size, we've actually built a mini estate of about 40 houses. So essentially we're a construction company led by architects in partnership with engineers and quantity surveyors, of course, and all the other professionals of the built environment. So that's Blue Line. Great. Now I remember going to one of your properties. Okay. And I, I remember something that was unique about it for me was um, you were building apartments that people could buy, two bedroom apartments yes. that uh, people could buy for the purpose of renting out as an investment property or buy to own, like there'll be a building and people could buy different apartments, like a condominium type of arrangement, That's which correct. made the barrier to um, owning homes a lot lower because lower. you didn't have to have enough money to build a whole big house. You could just build you know, just buy your apartments, which is for Nigeria is a bit of a novel arrangement. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, is that, are you still doing that? Okay, so um, let me give a bit of a background to that. Okay. Sometime in 2012, right, we started thinking about strategies to expand the business, right? And we saw um, a big opportunity within the real estate space. So at that point in time, the strategy we adopted was, let's try to convert our building services, building, cons building construction service to a product business. And we started thinking about real estate. Okay, look, we're architects, we're trained architects. We've built this competence around construction. What extra will it take us to start doing real estate development, right? It meant we needed money, as, as you know, <laughs> everybody needs money yes. for, for business. We yes. needed money, we needed marketing, you know, because we looked on the value chain. Oh, we're architects, we have land surveyors in our midst already. 
where we have this construction competence already. So the next thing will be, okay, look, let's get funding to be able to build, right? Source materials on our own, build, and then sell to people. So instead of selling your service as a construction company, what you're now doing is you're selling properties. So at that point in time, Quindex Properties was formed to carry out real estate transaction projects, aside Blue Line Urban projects. Okay. So Prindex, you know, conceives residential development, and then Blue Line is a construction company that builds those concepts. I, I hope see. you get it. Yes. So when you come to the business product of apartments, right? The problem we're trying to solve was very simple. You know that a lot of people are very desirous of being real estate in investors. Everybody wants to own a piece of real estate. But the hassle is just so much. Where am I going to get land? How am I going to get land? Omonile challenges. When I cross Omonile challenges, which are the community, you know, the local community boys that yes. always come to give you problems. Um, you scale that hurdle of buying the land and you start looking for a contractor that's not going to cheat you because mm. you're just scared of they're saying I'm going to build for 100 million. How much of it are you going to pocket? How much value am I getting from 100 million, right? And then even when you finish building it, you want to earn something. You want to earn value from it. So you're looking for tenants and then you have one or two tenants. They move in and then they spend you know, the first two years paying rent. And then after that, <laughs> you're not paying rent anymore. And then you're stuck with your investment, you know. So we looked at all that ballpark, you know, of issues that people were facing. And we thought, okay, look, what additional value can we bring to our customers and clients? You know, the, dis the discerning real estate investor. And we thought, okay, um, first of, whatever we need to do, we have to do it and take the full spectrum. Mm -hmm. So from conception, from buying the land all the way to conceiving, what kind of development will be there, up to, up to the point of how we're going to build it, and then how we're going to manage it afterwards. So you'd realize that a lot of developers, right, um, would build and just hand over your building to you. But what we do is to sell you real estate investment slots, okay, more or less. Mm -hmm. So we have a building of 20 apartments. You come, you look at it, you like the concept, you like the location, right? And then you find that the rental income you're going to get from it is interesting enough for you to subscribe. So you pay maybe, say, between 25 and 40 million for one apartment, a two-bed. Okay. And what happens from then on is to wait for us to finish. We'll tenant it for you. We we'll run the building services and maintenance, and then we we'll run the facility management as well. So at the end of every year, all you just keep doing is collecting your rental income and have your peace of mind. So that's the value proposition we bring to the table on the side of our development projects. I hope you get the difference. So there's construction, yes, yes. and then there's development. So you have um, the blue line, which does construction. Correct. And one of the clients of Blue Line is Prindex. The major client of Blue Line. Major, is major client. Yeah. So it's like a backward and forward integration, kind of backward yes. forward integration. Yes, correct. But Blue Line also does construction projects for, for other, other people. For other that's people. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. You talk about your investors and you, you talk, you know, you're, 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 you're an architect. Yes, my profession. Okay, my and training. you have a partner. Yes. Who super. is also an architect. Yes. An architect. And so you're two architects, you got together and you decided you wanted to go into real estate, like, you know. But it's not just like that. I think there are a lot of architects yeah. who <laughs> want to go into real yeah. estate. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about the, the difficulty of uh, getting fund that money is, yeah. a, is a problem. And mm -hmm. then you're now talking about investors. Please, Tolu, can you walk us through? Fill in the gap. <laughs> Where did those investors come from? How did you find them? Because I think it's a question a lot of people have. I listened to Ibuku Awoshika sometime. And uh, she said something very important that resonates with me every time I'm thinking about business. She said, every day you wake up, you're writing a page in your story. Now, what we don't realize is that a lot of people are watching what you're doing. Right? 
So we started Blue Line Urban Projects back in 2007. Two young guys left school, worked for about two, three years. Okay, let's start the hustle. <laughs> it was tough, no doubt. Um, but fortunately or unfortunately, right, we're working in an environment where there's a high level of distrust. Yeah? Um, people seemingly don't trust a lot of transactions within our industry right real estate construction and all that so when we came out and one of the things we started with was to say oh look um, whatever we do for our clients or our investors we must make sure that the first thing we put at the forefront of our minds is integrity so we do what we say and we say what we do simple as that unfortunately un unknowingly for us a lot of people are watching how we're progressing so when we had run Blue Line Urban Projects for about five years, I was started looking to go into development. Some of the clients we had worked with, you know, started taking notice of our new intentions. Oh, you want to do this? Oh, really? Okay. Maybe I can give you some money to start off. Where is your next project? When are you starting? What kind of apartments are you building? Okay, look, you've not started, so you're going to give me one flat at a discounted rate. And that's how we started building you know, little by little. I remember the first project we did. This gentleman who used to be my neighbor at some point, you know, walks up to me and, you know, was trying to market me to say, oh, Mr. Tuluwa, there's this land here. Oh, come and check it out. And, you know, this was about the time we we're conceiving the idea of moving into developments. We had targeted, we had um, strategically mapped out, you know, areas of, um, preference in terms of where we want to locate this development and you know Yaba was one of such areas so I used to live in Yaba at some point he was my neighbor he had become a street agent you know he was very vibrant and he just wanted business to happen so he came showed me the land and I liked it but I didn't have money <laughs> so we had to go back to the drawing board okay how do we raise money for this project and I mean in very simple terms what we did was to say okay look let's even first come up with the idea of what can be on it we checked what the regulatory body said in terms of statutory approval order and all that how many floors we can go how many parking we need to have you know all those dynamics that will come into the design and we started talking to our investors now these so-called investors are people as i said um that have been people that have been watching us watching the progress in the last five years. Okay, so I've given these people money. They delivered my project. I gave them money. They built this. They've done well. No issues. And, you know, they got interested. Oh, okay, this is your idea. Is this your first time? Yes, this is your first time. Ah, okay, you give me discounts. That's, that's the attitude. Like, you want to take my money to buy land. You give me some discount. And we worked out something that was, you know, okay for both parties. And... We paid for the land three times. Okay. Everything just worked miraculously. So you because, worked out an installment? Yes. In, Installmental payment. Payment, yeah. payment okay. by installments. Okay. okay. We didn't even know that the family was going to agree to such terms. I thought it was just going to be a one-off thing. So we're already looking at, okay, where can we get money for? Where can we top up? But, I mean, they were gracious enough to say, okay, if you want to pay three times, if you default, the penalties. I would say, if we pay earlier... We give us money to <laughs> you know, and you know, we got the land, and yes. that's how the first project started. Wow. This was about the time we were just coming into Stanford Seed for our transformation, you know, program. Okay. Um. So it was a case study that we had to use at the training to even try to, you know, get some more knowledge around how to expand you know into that how to new, go about yes into that, into that new phase of the business because okay. it was very new to us fund raising money was new to us marketing and sales was something that was very new to us because when we we're just architects building for people it was as simple as people saw your project billboard mm -hmm. they take your name down and then they have their consultants call you. you to tender for projects yes that's how it was yes. but in this case now we're now out there in the open trying to market apartments. So essentially, the answer to the question, how did we start getting investors, is that it started from the people that had been in our network. Okay. 
That's where it started. And they from. trusted you because you yes. had been faithful had, exactly. with the, the money they had given you for their project. Exactly, yes. Okay, so the currency you actually had was trust. trust. That's the currency. Hmm. That was at the first level. So this was when the development business was between zero and 500 million in revenue. Okay. Now we've passed the 1 billion mark. Okay. Now we're now talking to financial institutions. institutions. Okay. Because you need higher level of funding. And once your, your funding request gets to a certain point, you can only get it via structured finance. Mm. So now we're, we're talking to FIs and we're learning every day. It's, it's been an exciting journey. Don't tell me some of the things you've learned. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay, some of the things we've learned. I think for every investor, three things they, they want to hear when they're talking about giving you money. First is, what's your business idea? Secondly, they want to know the risks involved. Okay. Thirdly, how much time? Everybody or almost everybody I've come across wants their money back in 12 months. There goes the challenge mm. because in real estate, real estate is quite, um, real estate is a patient kind of business. Yes. It needs patient funding. You can't rush it or else you get it wrong. So that's, therein lies the challenge where we need to negotiate with investors to say, okay, look, you want to do 12 months, we want to do 18 months. How can we come to a middle ground? So that's one of the key things, the timing of the investment. Then of course, lastly, how much are you giving me back on my money? Return on investment. Return on investment is always critical. Um, it depends on a lot of things. They're looking at the risk. How much risk are they getting involved in? And I've come to appreciate that the higher the thing the risk is, the more they want to get from you in terms yes. of returns. Because there are other alternatives exactly. for them. I mean, for, yeah, there are yeah. alternatives that they are foregoing to give you money. So. Um, I think it's been quite interesting learning about money and how people think about money. Okay. I've got very close friends that when we see each other, hey, how are you? What's up? What's up? Where are you hanging out this evening? Let's let's catch up on drinks. And then when it comes to money, hey, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they're, they're not they're not so no, cozy they're, anymore. They're, no, 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 no. <laughs> they cut all that off, you know. So, so as I said, it, it's been very interesting. But I think one. One strong thing that I keep referring to is people just want to know that they can trust you. Mm. Yeah, because look, every investor out there, they're not happy when their money is not earning money for them. Money is just sitting in the bank. They're not happy. They're, they're not happy. They're agitated. So they really need to find opportunities. If you come by, you know, if you come on their radar mm -hmm. when they're looking for such opportunities and you're able to close a good deal and you deliver on time. No issues, no stories. They keep coming back. We've had repeat investors on our projects. Okay, Tolu, so you started a real estate business Correct. without any funds of yours. Well, <laughs> you had you used other people's money and you, the capital that you had was trust. Trust, correct. Okay. Now, um, and you, you said you built, you built up this trust um, from delivering you know from yeah making good on the promises that you had made to people who gave you money to do their projects yes correct. but i know that there are lots of obstacles to delivery <laughs> in nigeria and i i don't oh, wow. think you will tell me that you've started a real estate project not not real estate but a construction project for a private client and you didn't have challenges or reasons not to be able to complete the project um, things, uh, this is a very volatile economy, economy. environment. Yes. And how, how were you able to deliver all those times or were there times where you could not deliver? Um, that's one. And two, if you, Sorry. if you were able to deliver to so how did you overcome the issues or challenges? Okay. So in terms of construction, um, I'll talk about, uh, challenges that were faced um, doing construction projects, right? Especially on the side of um, the construction services, what we're building for people. Um, I think that the first thing is the issue of inflation. 
Yes. Right? Very big issue in the construction space because essentially about 80% of what we use, the materials we use, about 80% are brought in from abroad. So even for the ones that are manufactured locally, the local suppliers will tell you 70% of their own raw materials coming from abroad for the good type of material, the good quality, high grade materials. Yes. So inflation is a big, big risk. That's yes. the first thing. How have we mitigated this? Yeah. How have we worked around this? Um, it hasn't been so easy. So for the most part of it, most of our construction projects, um, we sign contracts that allow us to come back to our clients to say, look, there's a challenge here. We'll, we'll table it. I will sit down together to address it appropriately. I will come to, you know, decisions that can, you know, move the project forward. The project is the objective, right? So we've had one or two projects where we had to go back to the client to say, ah, Madam, Olga, this particular project that we signed in so so year at this price, it's not really going to be viable anymore because these are the current rates. Current rates. Yeah. So in such a situation, the quantity surveyors, the consultants on the project will probably have identified the rates of materials when you sign the project, just so that there's a basis of comparison, right? So that if you come back for any reason, you can now check to say, oh, okay, yes, indeed, there has been this level of increment, so we have to somewhat accommodate it. So we're talking about challenges, as you asked. Um, inflation is one big deal. Another big, big issue is trained, mm. skilled workmen. Okay. So we realized that we have a few, you know, a few people, a crop of artisans that are really good at what they do. We deliver a good job based on what they've done, and then we get more, <laughs> we get more referrals. But your team, your capacity isn't expanding. Mm, you're going to clone them. Exactly, right? and then cloning them, <laughs> cloning them is almost impossible, right? Because even they have issues training people under them yes. to be able to expand to capture all the business opportunities they have that we're bringing on the table, right? So um, that's one big issue. Uh, what the resultant effect of that is. When projects come to our table, it takes us just a little longer to expand, to be able to fill up those opportunities. We eventually do, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes we're a bit late on our projects. Sometimes, you know, we have to make shift by bringing in people from outside of the country, from Ghana, from, um, from Republic of Benin, you know, where we have, you know, very trained workmen to be able to augment what we have as, you know, the, the stock of, you know, the, skilled artisans that we have. So trained workmen is another issue we face internally. I've talked about inflation. Yes. I've talked about, you know, trained workmen in terms of capacity expansion. So I think at some point in time or the other, we're going to have a vocational, a training school. You know, Blue Line is going to set up a training school just so that we can take that as the next step of what we need to do strategically to be able to expand, you know, our capacity to meet up with the demand of, you know, the work and the opportunity coming to the table. Hmm. Let me think of a third. No, it's okay. If there too, you can. I'm just thinking. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking about this. That there are opportunities. Um, you start a business, you're growing it, and then you have work, and you. This is a country of two hundred million people. Million people, about, and yeah. more than half of them are young people but you're not able to get skilled yeah workers okay. to do work that there Excellent is work. and majority of the people are living below poverty yeah so it, it it seems like there's there's a gap there's a gap a big one well i guess that's a business opportunity <laughs> yes. because you know training the vocation it's very interesting because I, I've been talking to, you know, a number of business people lately and it's the same thing. It's the same story. In different, yes, in different industries. Okay. So it sounds like some people don't have, and then there's some people who have, that's when I say have, their, their businesses are growing. Okay. But they're not able to meet the demand because they don't have enough workers to expand. Exactly. And so that's, that's quite interesting. And it looks like if it's not dealt with, 
it's 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 a big issue and mm. if it's not dealt with what happens eventually is that there will be it will just cripple the capacity yes of most of us that have opportunities on the table so it's it's an issue for everybody but we have to be strategic about solving it hmm. and now you you have um you have a partner uh, how do you navigate the challenges of working with a partner? Do you have the same management style? <laughs> <laughs> how do you work together? Wow. Shupo. <laughs> Shupo. Shupo Jago is... Um, partnership is an interesting thing. Okay, so uh, let me talk a bit about Shupo and how we met and where we are today. Um, myself and Shupo, we, we attended Unilag about the same time. University he, of Lagos. Yes, University of mm -hmm. Lagos. Um, he he was about two years ahead of me, but I mean, when we all got out of school, we met up again. I was started, you know, working in the same you know, organization. And then after a while, we both left that organization mm -hmm. and we just started thinking of what to do. Okay, what's next? And then some you know, briefs came in and we started designing and then from there, it became design and build, and then from there we grew the construction company, and now we have a group. So there's construction company, there's development, you know, there's um, other things that we're doing on the side as well. Um, I think I've known Shuko for close to twenty years now. Okay. Because we're friends from back, you know, way back in mm -hmm. school, and you know, as people always say. How are you guys keeping it up? And they just ask us randomly. I'm like, well, I'm doing my own thing. He's doing his own thing. I think we're just lucky that, you know, we have personalities that, that can allow each other. So you get on match. pretty well. Yeah, we get on pretty well. Hmm. I'm not saying we don't have disagreements or disappointments or fights. We do have all that. But, you know, right from when we started, the first thing we put as quote-unquote, um, an unwritten rule of the partnership was that we have to put the company first. We have to put the business first above any personal interests. Okay. Right? When we look at some situations, some business, some business decisions, we come to a point where, okay, I'm not agreeing to this, you're not agreeing to this. We bring in a third party, somebody who's uh, probably a mentor. So you get a mediator? Yes. We bring oh. in a third party. And, okay. you know, there are business... Mentors that we talk to regularly. You do? Yes. They're business mentors because, I mean, the, the Is this business... like professional business mentors yeah, or, yeah. or people sure. that you just decided, okay, we want, we like this person? Or are they actually like official um, business mentors? 50-50. So there, some of them are people that, yes, we like, we know, you know, we, we know, I know the person, Shuko knows the person. And then some of them we've gone out of our space to look for, to say, oh, you're, you're a professional in finance. Mm. You're, a professional, you're a professional in marketing. Let's mm -hmm. talk to you. Let's let's get okay. your opinion. Okay. So because we understand very clearly that putting the company first is the most important thing, the business has grown to the point where we need to bring in, Others. you know, parties from the outside to be able to solve certain growth problems. Because okay. you would always have growth issues. You would mm -hmm. always have growth pains that you need to talk about. So at that point, that we seek third-party opinion. help, okay. third-party opinion to guide us. And, you know, as um, Stephen Covey said, right, in one of his books, The Third Alternative, mm. you just never know. You see things, oh, this is what I'm thinking. Oh, this is what I'm thinking. And then somebody just comes and looks at two of you and is like, wait a minute, yes. have you thought about it this False way? False choices. There's always a third alternative. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. I didn't even think about it. Okay. And then, you know, we find, you know, I'm an amicable way to solve that problem and we move forward. As I said, um, Partnerships are always not, they're always, it's not every time that you find it easy, mm. but two heads are always better than one. And let me tell you one. Always? Most times. Okay. <laughs> most times. And let me tell you one big, big secret. Mm -hmm. So you see, these days, right, the business has grown to the point where Shupo is the managing director of Blue Line Urban Projects. I'm the managing director of Prindex Properties. We operate under the same management umbrella. Right. Okay. So pretty much I'm doing what I like, talking to people, meeting people, marketing, real estate, looking for funding. He's busy doing what he likes. Shupo is a technical person. Mm. He likes being on site, 
you know, he likes coordinating work. He likes to solve problems. He likes, he just likes to get into the work Sounds and like dig in. like a perfect union. Yeah. So <laughs> at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the companies have metamorphosized to a point where we're just cruising and coasting. Okay. And right now, what's most important is that I just have one guy that I can just talk to when there's too much headache. Mm. So that loneliness of being an entrepreneur, you, you, you have someone you who have, knows exactly what you're going through. So a lot of mm. entrepreneurs at our level, the only person they can talk to is their partners at home. Who may not understand who may, exactly Number one, who may not understand. Doing. Then number two, you're bringing work pressure home. Mm. When I get home, I wait in my car for five minutes. I mentally shut down. <laughs> <laughs> so, office work. Yeah, I mentally shut down. Because so that wife, you're present. Yeah, because my wife doesn't want to see me grouchy or looking... Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So I think right now on cruise control, one of the most important um, benefits I see in the partnership is that I have... A second opinion i have somebody next to me that i can say this is what is going on mm. what do you think so sounding board sounding board mm. correct beyond the fact that we meet every week yes. to talk yes. management stuff just look this is the headache i'm having what do you think mm. so your but your values are aligned i guess yeah. so that no that, no no that no, no, no 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 there are some basics that have to align your values your vision okay. you know how you want the business to grow and then what we do is that every year we take a break together and sit down and discuss okay. what plans we have for the new year. Mm. It's important to take that break. Take yourself out mm. of the work pressure. Mm. So and like just a go strategy sit somewhere. Summit. Yes, like a strategy okay. summit. Just two of us. I'm not okay. even talking about the whole office now. Mm. Just two of us as friends. Because sometimes the work pressure even gets in the way of the friendship. Yes. yes. So you would not even remember that in the first place your friends. You know, when you are when you're busy getting grouchy about one issue, <laughs> then, well, you guys my guy now. What's all this one? You understand? So so it's um I mean, it's what it is. I'm very blessed to have him as my friend and more or less now, or more especially as a business partner. Um, I don't think in any way we would have achieved what we've achieved in the last 15 years of business if we're, you know, running our own thing. No. Um, Do you have an exit clause? Oh, wow. <laughs> exit clause? Yes. Not just yet. Okay. Not just yet. Maybe um, in the next two to three years, we can start to think about, okay, look, what if one of us wants to retire? What if one of you wants to exit before you're ready? Oh, then we'll sit down and talk about it amicably, just okay. like we've always done in the past. I don't okay. think it's an issue. I think um, um, I think we would... See, see well, Maka, the most important thing is you look at this person and you know that... When there is yawa, sorry, the word yes, yawa. Yes, yawa is trouble. It's okay. That's fine. Let's be free. <laughs> yeah, it means trouble. <laughs> yes, yes. That when there is yawa, you can look at this guy and talk to him, mm -hmm. and he would understand you. You may not have exactly one hundred percent the same values across every single issue, mm -hmm. but over the years, you've come to know him that this is this guy. He has come to know me that this is who I am. Mm. So there must be that gap of, you know, hmm, consideration. Serious romance going here. No, seriously. Nice. <laughs> there must be that gap. If you, really, no, if you really, look, there are no two people alike. Yes, yeah, Even true. twins have differences in how. Yes. Yeah. So you just have to understand that the benefits of your being together outweighs, you know, the downside of not being together. Yes. It's as simple as that, really. Fantastic. Thank you. Hmm. So how do you measure your impact? Looking back, you know, so far with what you've done. Mm. Impact. Yes. I like the word. So let me give you a small figure. Um, on the development side of things, right? Mm -hmm. When we were done with mm -hmm. our first project in Yaba, 3032 apartments, we're doing um, a project closing meeting and the data that came to us back then was that about 4,500 people earned from that project. Mm. That mm. project was, um, I think it was a 300 million hour project. Mm -hmm. 
4,500 people earned from that project. Wow. Economically, they earned wow. a living from that project. I'm talking of every single person that came to mm. work mm. on the project. Mm -hmm. Every single person. Mm. Now, this is a block of 18 apartments. Mm. So look at the numbers. You're building 18 apartments and over 4,000 people earned from the project. Yes. That's the kind of, that's the level of opportunity we created. Mm. As I speak to you, um, so let me, let me go back and give you a bit of a, a, stand for, a stand for safe feedback. Okay. You know, when we're doing our transformation plan presentation, um, we said we're architects, we're into construction, um, we've now started doing real estate development, so we want to build 150 apartments in five years, mm. right? That was the pitch. And then Nancy, Nancy is our coach. Nancy and one other facilitator were looking at us and like, <laughs> <laughs> five years, one yeah, fifty thousand. Like, are you guys joking or what? Tolu and Shuba, I've seen you. I've seen you in too class. Too small, eh? Yeah, it's too small. Come on, put a zero after the fifty. Put a zero after the zero. Like, oh my god, a thousand five hundred. Yeah, that was the target. And you just put a zero after the. So they stretched you. Yeah. So at that meeting where we were presenting. You know, they just blew our mind. They said, look, put a zero after the 150 and then target 1,005 and then start asking your questions, How? asking the right questions oh. to lead you to 1,005. So that's exactly what we did. We went back to the office, sat down with the team and started looking and said, okay, look, 1,005, how can we do it in five years? Oh my God, that was 2017. It's 2022. Five years is up. <laughs> where are we? <laughs> so where are you? Exactly. I'm so, asking. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> so, um, you know, it really, really blew our minds yes. to say, okay, so this is actually possible. And we started looking very deeply into how we could achieve it. As I said, funding is a big issue. Of course. But I'm happy with where we are. Yeah. You know, we're, we've started, you know, getting a hang of how structured financing can grow the business. And we lost two years due to COVID. So let's Exactly. Let's so let's give ourselves a break. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. so, yeah. So, um, talking of impact. Right now, we're at 30 apartments completed, 120 ongoing. Mm. So more or less, we've hit our 10%, 10 of our targets. Yeah. If you go back to remember that the first project of 18 apartments you know, brought over 4,000 people to earn mm. in it, mm. you can now mentally think about the numbers as we're growing. Wow. Yeah. That our target is to hit... 1,500 apartments by 2025. Yes, yes. Right now we're at 150, 10%. That'll be over 10,000 people actually. Exactly. Yes. That would be say maybe in the, in the range of say 10, 15,000. Yes. Because at some point we have to get things mechanized, right? We can't keep on using labor for every aspect mm -hmm. of construction. So we have to get things mechanized. Mm. So I think we're very happy. We're very fulfilled about the kind of impact we're making in terms of expansion, capacity expansion. Um, when that data came to us, you know, back in 2019 to say, oh, this one single project, 4,000 people are like, oops. Wow. Wow. That's, that's really, yeah, really that good. is huge. And it's good to, it's yeah. gratifying to know that yeah. one is able to make such an impact, impact and help yes. people with earning. That's, yes. that's really great. Yes. Um, so looking back now, or if you had maybe 25 year old Tolu, tell me one thing you would advise him starting out in business. Hmm. Well, Maka, these are questions. <laughs> 25 year old. Yes. Um, Just one thing. I really can't think about it. What, what is the one thing I regret? Okay, this is it. You decoded my question. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I decoded <laughs> it, yes. So, so this is it, right? Um, I think knowledge is very important. Where and how you get your knowledge is extremely important because okay. the mind is everything. So if you're not aligning yourself with the right kind of institution or the mm. right kind of network mm. that can help you think big, okay, you're going to struggle, right? And you see, there's unconscious incompetence. There's a situation where you don't know 
and you do not even know that you don't know. Mm. It's deep. Mm. And what's painful for me, so I, I, I went through Stanford Seed Transformation Program, coming back home, happy and sad. Mm. Happy that I'd got this high level of knowledge that can expand the business exponentially. And sad that there are thousands of business people that may never ever get that opportunity. Mm. And I still have to be relating with them. So when I'm talking to them, they don't get it where they I'm coming from. They don't get from. it. Mm. You, you get it. So that's been, that's been really deep for me. I, I, didn't, I didn't school abroad. I schooled at the University of Lagos. Um, architecture, finished with a distinction. You know, just, just a normal fresh guy out of school. Hustling. Hustling, <laughs> yeah, you know. And, you know, at that point in time after school, you thought, okay, Six years of architecture has been very stressful. Ah, let me start making some money. And then, I think three, four years later, I attended a project management course. Mm -hmm. You know, um, orchestrated by Project Management Institute of yes. the United States of yes. America. And in, I remember that when I was <laughs> when I was attending the 36 compulsory hours yes. that you need to go through for you to write professional exams. I felt like, like I didn't know anything. I, all, the, all the knowledge I had about architecture, I felt like I was in a brand new world of knowledge. Like, oh, wow. Hmm. So imagine that you now have that, you now come to Stanford Seed, and you now get this, you know, level of knowledge that can hmm. expand your business exp hmm. exponentially. Hmm. It humbles you. Okay. You know, coming from Africa, coming from Nigeria, where you feel privileged to even have this level of education, it humbles you. So if I look at myself at 25, if I, if I go back to that age, what would I have done better? I'll have sought out these levels of knowledge much so earlier have on. Intentionally. Yes, I'll have intentionally. Sought out. Yes. Knowledge. International exposure. Yes, international yeah. exposure. International exposure. Mm. Very important. Okay. Very, okay. very that, important. That's, that's... So what um, you're saying uh, to someone who might be starting is don't don't be a local champion. Exactly. Yeah, just especially now that we're in a global yes. economy. Global it's village. a global village. <laughs> yeah. So you're in everything you're doing, you're competing with people all over the world. Correct. So Correct. it's not about this is how we do it here. No. It's because, about how has it been done over there? Yes. And how can I compete with... Yes, wherever it is. Because at the end of the day, you're competing with those people. And it's the same energy, the same effort you use. So you might as well be more efficient with it. Yeah, what you're oh, doing. Wow, this is deep. <laughs> <laughs> this is deep. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. You're very much welcome. Okay, so what's the future for Blue Line and... Prindex. Blue Line, Prindex. Yeah. Blue and what's and the Prindex. future for Tolu? Ah, that's future for Tolu. Okay. <laughs> Which one do you want to answer first? Blue Line Prindex or me? Um, Blue Line Prindex, then you. Okay, for Blue Line, um, I see Blue Line growing into an institution that is top tier when it okay. comes to construction work in Nigeria. Okay. We're happy right now that we're attending tender negotiation meetings with some grade B level contractors. Okay. You know, grade A is the top of the top, yes. Julius Berger and all that. But grade B level, we're attending some tender. I'm like, and the CEOs are like, ah, you guys are here. Oh yeah, we're here, we came. So it gives us that level of fulfillment. Yeah, that and we're you're doing. here too, you should ask them too. You guys are here too. <laughs> no, you know, you know, <laughs> like, where would we be? No, 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 no. You know, these guys are so-called eggmores that understand. have been in the market. You've arrived in exactly. their, in so their you space. You have to talk to them with respect so that That's, they won't just yeah. go and deflate your time before you go out <laughs> of the meeting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm happy that we've had, you know, such recognition, okay. right? Um, and for Prindex? Yes, that's for Blue Line. I'm happy mm -hmm. we've had such And I think that the sky is still the, the sky is just the limit when it comes to, you know, how far Blue Line is going to grow, mm. you know, especially in terms of capacity expansion, vocational service, training people, bringing them into the pool, right? For Prindex, the market is large enough for what we're trying to do. Mm. 1,500 apartments is really just the beginning. I mean, the housing gap, the opportunities in the commercial real estate space is so huge. 
And what you'd find is that you don't really have real estate professionals. You don't have as much built environment professionals mm. running real estate developments. It's a mm. big issue. It keeps me mm. awake at night. So I think that at some point or the other, we're going, to demin we're going to dominate the residential real estate space at some point or the other, sooner than later in the future. As for me personally, Wamaka, I started business when I was 27. Okay. Now I'm 42. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah. So I'm smelling retirement small, small. Ah, you said <laughs> that a long way ago. I know, but what I'm saying is that that we started early has to count for something. Mm. You understand? Yes. That we started early has to count for something. Mm. So maybe we're going to incorporate a board at some point and then we step up to the board level and have younger guys take over management. And then with that, we can now focus on working on the business, not mm -hmm. inside of the business. There's okay. a difference. Yes. When you're working inside of the business and when you're working on the business, at board level, we can effectively work on the business mm -hmm. with the people that are management team. Okay. You understand? So I think for me, that's the next thing I'm that's looking the future. at. Yes, yes. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wamaka. You've been very it's, generous it's, yes. with, your, with your experience, your yes, story. Yes, yes. Really glad that you came here to speak with us. And so that's Tolu Bawa Ala. And thank you so much for hanging with us and listening to our stories. We believe, we believe